Well, our next guest in this story could probably blow your mind. So let's walk back to the 1990s when our next guest was a special agent with the IRS. Went down a rabbit hole trying to uncover exactly what the law was regarding paying federal income taxes. Well, when he got to the bottom of that rabbit hole, he realized, wait a second, something is amiss and decided to resign from the IRS and hasn't paid federal income taxes since 1998 was the last time our next guest filed federal income taxes. And now he's on a mission to educate all of us about this farce. That is former special agent of the IRS, Joe Bannister. You can read more about his mission over his website, agentfortruth.com. But when I heard your story, Joe, I just had to have you on the show. And I'm just going to really step back today, and I want you to educate our audience about this. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Clayton. Thank you for having me. So, I, you know, I, I just ad-libbed sort of an intro there. I hope I didn't butcher the history of it. But you, you were working at the IRS in the 1990s, an accountant. You have an accounting background, of course. And what led you on this investigation to figure out whether or not paying income taxes was legitimate, was legal, was constitutional? And how did you have this like come to Jesus moment about federal taxes? Well, I, I, my entire professional life revolved around the income tax. Uh, earned a degree in accounting from San Jose State University back in the 80s and uh, earned my CPA certificate from the state of California and then got into the accounting profession and found uh, it took me that long to figure out how boring the accounting profession was. <laughs> and so I decided uh, I had a lot of uh, relatives and friends who were in law enforcement. And so I decided to see if there was a way that I could combine the law enforcement with the, you know, accounting, finance, tax. And of course, uh, there were two choices, the FBI and the IRS Criminal Investigation Division. So I applied to both agencies. Uh, the FBI was actually my uh, first choice because at least back in the 90s, they had somewhat of a good reputation. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, you had, you had the X-Files, you had the popularity. I, In fact, when I was in college, I thought maybe I'll go into the FBI now. Oh my gosh, it's one of the most corrupt organizations in the world in the United States. So yeah, their, their reputation has really gone down the toilet. Yes. So it was it was better in the 90s. And I was still you know excited about the possibility. FBI tends to recruit lawyers and CPAs. So I was a CPA at the time. Uh, but a, a, a mentor said, well, you should apply to at least a couple federal agencies because you never know quite how it's going to go. And so I applied to the IRS Criminal Investigation Division because actually this mentor was a supervisor in the IRS Criminal Investigation Division. So he assisted me with applying to the FBI. He knew that was my first choice. And then there was a hiring freeze. This is back when Newt Gingrich was the Speaker of the House and uh, Bill Clinton was in the White House. And uh, so during this hiring freeze, the FBI couldn't hire me, even though I had passed all the physical, psychological, you know, um, uh, competency, the all the tests that the FBI threw at me passed and was basically waiting for a plane ticket to Quantico, Virginia. And then this hiring freeze occurred. And so uh, meanwhile, that plan B of having applied to the IRS CID, Criminal Investigation Division, uh, ended up being coming into the you know first choice. Or uh, So I was actually uh, hired in... Um, San Francisco, California. I was born and raised in San Jose, California, like where the sharks, Silicon Valley. And so I was hired in San Francisco, uh, sworn in in November of 1993. Uh, but my, like as I say, my entire professional life revolved around the income tax. I expected to spend a full 20 year career, law enforcement career with the IRS. Um, I, for the first three years, it was really um, amazing. And not because I enjoyed shaking people down for their meal receipts, things like that, but actually doing money laundering investigations, uh, traveling across the country, uh, going after money launderers, uh, did some tax investigations also. Um, but as I say, I really was having the time of my life uh, living and working in the city that I grew up in, San Jose, 
and being a federal agent, a federal criminal investigator. So, you know, if there had any bias at all against the information that I came upon, it was that, you know, this stuff couldn't possibly be true. All right. So that's the backstory. You were excited you were going after money launderers and criminals and and and, and bad folks who were, were skirting the law. And then I guess you had a light bulb moment and you discovered something that set you on this path. What was that moment when you said, wait a second, this is a this is all built on a farce, this idea of the income tax here. What was that moment for you? Well, there was a, still is a talk radio station, KSFO, uh, broadcast out of San Francisco. And so, of course, all the way down to San Jose, 50 miles to the south, you can hear the station loud and clear. And so when I was out doing my investigations, there was nothing against the regulations to listen to the radio. Um, of course, the, you know, the chatter on the police radio is few and far between when you're an IRS special agent. It's not like a police officer. And so I was listening to this talk show uh, hosted by a guy that was very trustworthy. He wasn't a partisan kind of guy. It was just about what's right or wrong. And he had a guest on his show uh, named DV Kid, uh, and she started talking about the income tax and saying that it was voluntary, that there wasn't a law you know, passed by Congress and signed by the president that made most Americans required to pay the federal income tax. And if you can imagine me driving around in my government car with my handcuffs and Sig Sauer nine millimeter and, you know, saying, lady, this tax ain't voluntary. <laughs> right. Uh, but because of this talk show host and how truthful all of the previous guests had been uh, and how truthful he was, uh, he was like a colonel in the special forces of the army, uh, just a real trustworthy guy. So I thought, well, something's wrong here. Either I'm not that great of an investigator because <laughs> I've trusted this talk show host who has these kooky people on, or there's something to this. And that was uh, just before Christmas in 1996. So that started me on about a two, two and a half year journey while I still worked every day as an IRS special agent, you know, doing my investigations. Um, but also on evenings, weekends, taking vacation days, and starting to dig into these claims that this lady made on the radio that day, she had a couple of booklets that were, you know, 40, 50 pages each. I ordered those and inside the booklets were all of these allegations and she put address, you know, the names of the people, addresses, phone numbers, and, you know, contrary to popular belief, investigators use the pen and the phone a lot more than they use their gun. And so I just started to deploy my training uh, you know, on my own time to investigate these claims to see what's this all about. And were you sort of going after these individuals, getting on the phone, using your pen and paper and getting on the phone with the intention of, hey, I'm an agent. I carry a gun. I've got a badge. I'm going to get these tax cheats. You know, this is all. Or were you almost immediately thinking, huh, maybe they're onto something here and maybe you're coming onto their side of the table? Not, not initially. I, I really, it was, it was like, well, if they're lying to me, then if anyone, if I'm ever given a forum to talk about it, I'm going to say, well, I encountered all these liars. Yeah. Uh, you know, the IRS is right. They're what the, at the time they were called illegal tax protesters. Um, so the IRS really had a, you know, a, a bad thing for them. But by the same token, if I found people who are truthful, I mean, that's, that was my job or supposed to be, you know, you're supposed to uncover facts right? and, and present those facts to a prosecutor. So, uh, no, no fear of facts, uh, you know, in those days, at least for me. And so I just began to, to, to gather facts and, uh, I, to, to cut, you know, give you the cash value after two, two and a half years, it was all through 1997 and 1998. Uh, you know, driving my wife crazy with not only working a 50 hour work uh, a week job, uh, having two kids, soccer coach, uh, you know, doing all the things that a husband and father do, but then going to the law library and really digging deep into these claims and using, you know, every skill that I could muster, uh, being a CPA, you know, the IRS trained me in, in uh, Glencoe, Georgia, the Federal Law Enforcement Training Center. Um, trusted and, me to and, carry a gun and a badge around. 
And you have access to the IRS. I mean, so you were in a, a unique position here. So you could verify, yes. check back and forth what these claims are being made with the IRS. So you, you you can just go right into the office and check in whether or not this... Can you just give me like a high level here? I'm not a, not a tax accountant and I don't play one on television. But could you give me like a high level... What were some of the facts being leveled by both this this radio guest and what you were finding in her booklets? And what was, you know, what were these what were these moments sticking out to you? What were these pieces of information and facts that really just lit your hair on fire? Well, I love your question because I've got a an answer, at least a, a, an anecdotal answer. Uh, up this upstairs uh, in this, we called it the the gold building, believe it or not, where the IRS was housed. <laughs> Because in San Jose, California, on Market Street, it's literally got gold windows. Um, but upstairs was the IRS uh, law library. And so one of the claims was that the IRS's own internal manuals, uh, called the Internal Revenue Manual, or IRM as the acronym, inside that manual, it would actually say that the IRS criminal investigation division that I worked in or the examination division, which is where the auditors are, or the collection division where the you know guys that steal your or take money out of your bank account and uh, put liens on your houses and those things. If you look at the Internal Revenue Manual, you'll see that it actually lays out that the jurisdiction, you know, the reach, the ability of these IRS agents is limited to Americans who are living and working abroad outside the country, not inside the country where you'd expect, because that's where we see them. They're on TV, they're out there doing their audits and investigations. And I thought, well, that couldn't possibly be true. So I went upstairs to the law library and, and flipped through the official internal revenue manual that the IRS, you know, keeps for their own lawyers and, and accountants. And there it was. Uh, in fact, I've got that on my website on the landing page, agentfortruth.com. Um, these copies of the Internal Revenue Manual that I looked at and thought, wow, well, this isn't a lie. This is exactly as these people that the IRS called illegal tax protesters are saying that the IRS's own admission in their own Bible, you know, their own manual says that they're reach their jurisdiction is limited to Americans living and working abroad. And so the crux of her argument is that Americans that are not living abroad and are just living in the United States don't have to pay an, a federal income tax. Is that the, the heart of her claim? Well, there, it's a pretty deep topic, I'm sure. Like, you know, we could really go into the weeds uh, and I know you don't have time to do that, but basically it centers on uh, an absence of a, of a liability statute. And what I mean by that is if anyone just can uh, bear to go into the Internal Revenue Code and I actually can show you why it'd be hard to bear wow. uh, to go <laughs> in. This is from 2012. Um, but anyway, now with the internet, of course, you can, you don't have to go and flip through pages. You can go and do word searches, but the IRS in their, in the 1040 booklet, they, uh, display what's called the privacy act and paperwork reduction act notice. And that's basically the notice to the public about what laws that are there that require you to do these things, you know, for the IRS, give them tax returns and the irs's own admission in those statements which are required by law because you're you know you as an american are supposed to know what laws require you to do what things so the irs spells out and again this is on my website that you know you must give us a return or statement for any tax you are liable for you know any tax you are required to pay and the courts have ruled that well, you have to be able to be the person responsible for paying a particular tax. So in the, in the law, there's a person or a party that's required to pay a liquor tax, uh, a tobacco tax, uh, the papers that go around a cigarette, there's a tax on that. There are all kinds of excise taxes uh, that are and income tax that are required to be paid, but there's a person 
who's made liable, who's, who's you know, designated as the responsible party to pay it. And so it's not, I mean, people might think it's an oversight, but how could it be an oversight that the average American living and working in the United States is not made liable to pay the federal income tax? So it literally says in the code that as an American, you are not liable for paying federal income tax. Well, it's, it's absent. In other it's words, all of these other parties are made liable, but you'd think, you know, job one would be to make the average American liable to pay it. Um, and again, I don't want to keep pointing to the website, but it's just, you know, free information as a way that people can check into what I, what I'm saying. Um, and as I said to you earlier, you know, uh, offline, I'm not a, a Pied Piper trying to get people to, um, you know, get into a battle with an 800 pound gorilla. I just, you know, I've got this, my story where I'm, I came across this information. I took an oath to support and defend the constitution. I was very mindful of that oath throughout my service. And, you know, I, I uh, confronted my IRS supervisors, confronted probably isn't even the right term. I approached them. <laughs> They all took the same oath that I did, uh, as bitter a pill as it would be to, to swallow. I just wanted them to look at my analysis. Um, and I didn't make up anything myself. I was simply, as an investigator, gathering you know, facts and evidence that were already out there. Right. And I just felt I had a duty to know what the truth was because I was raised that you know, only countries like Cuba or the USSR uh, Soviet Union for younger people, <laughs> uh, what's today Russia, uh, have political prisoners. But, you know, in America, only people that actually commit crimes, um, you know, and are convicted by a jury of their peers are going to be in prison. But I was finding that, that maybe that wasn't the case. And actually the USA had its own uh, set of political prisoners to keep an agenda uh, going, you know, a system that was actually not uh, telling the American people the truth. So what did your supervisors say? You presented them with this information. Hey, everything that we're doing on a daily basis, going after individuals who aren't paying income tax, um, our job is kind of not really relevant. Uh, what did they say to you? Well, in a nutshell, uh, I gave them a, a letter. So I, I wrote down my, my basic concerns. And I said, you know, I, I basically said, I'd really appreciate some assistance here because I've spent the last two years, you know, doing this investigation. I did it on my own time. I didn't ask for, you know, I didn't do it on government time, uh, but I really have some serious concerns. I took an oath to support and defend the constitution. You took the same oath. I went through all the treasury guidelines of, you know, what you should do when you encounter fraud, waste, or abuse. So I just followed the rule book and approached them. And of course, they looked at me like I had two heads. Uh, I didn't go to the media or anything. I just wanted to, wanted some assistance. You know, if I've taken a wrong turn, if I've somehow done something, you know, untoward. Uh, but I mean, I, here's my here's the evidence I gathered. Here's how I gathered it. The, the IRS trained me right on how to be an investigator. Uh, so I just used the same skills, the same training. Um, but they basically, for about a week, nothing happened. And then I was called into uh, what today is called the special agent in charge or SAC, uh, called into his office. And he said, what I'm about to tell you, I've been instructed to tell you. And uh, he told me that he basically got the word from the assistant commissioner for criminal investigation uh, back in Washington, D.C. So that guy answers to the commissioner. And they told me that they wouldn't be addressing any of my concerns and that they would provide me with the paperwork uh, necessary to tender my resignation. Wow. So keep quiet. We want you to leave. Get your paperwork together for a resignation. So you then leave the IRS. You then, I guess, realize, well, I... I I, I, why would I pay federal income taxes? Now, I've just discovered this. I've spent two years investigating this. I worked at the IRS. Is that when you decided I'm not I'm not paying federal income taxes anymore? Well, it was certainly a difficult uh, decision because my entire life I've been filing federal you know income tax returns. Um, but 
I, I believed, you know, based on the evidence, I mean, I gave you just the, the small snippet of how the IRS's own manuals were saying things that, that proved what the citizens were saying and disproved what the IRS claims. Well, and I guess I should point out, is, is there, I mean, there's no law that says you have to pay federal income taxes, right? Is there a law on the books? So Americans that are watching right now, that are thinking they want to go down this rabbit hole as well. Is there a law that they would be running afoul of if they decided not to pay their income taxes? And I know you're not a Pied Piper for it. You're not encouraging people not to do it and go up against the, the beast of lawfare and deal with all of that. And, and I'm not either. I just want to be very clear. We're just, this is, this video is for informational purposes only, and you can choose to do with it what you will and do your own research on it. Um, but is there a specific law that people would be running afoul of if they decided not to pay their federal income taxes that you know of? I, I mean, I could find none. And it wasn't like I didn't diligently search for the two years while I was an IRS agent. And ever since, you know, ever since February 25th of 99, when I resigned, uh, it's been nothing but a, a sincere, good faith effort, not some, you know, BS thing where I can make a big a bunch of bucks from it. You know, I, I, right. uh, I had to leave a very high paying government job, a pension, um, leave it all. And uh, so I, you know, I believe what I'm saying, but I want everyone else. What I really would like is just an inf to inform people uh, so that if they ever get served, they go on and serve on a jury, uh, that they're informed jurors, that they actually can see, well, maybe I won't, I'll rest and wait and see, and not just think that that guy or gal, you know, sitting at the defense table is a tax cheat, you know, uh, <laughs> Maybe the government, uh, you know, they've been caught in quite a few lies, especially lately. Uh, right. <laughs> maybe they're maybe the government has another motive, you know, than than telling us the truth and taking good care of us. So you stopped paying taxes. Did, was there any retribution? Did the government try to come after you? Try to take you to court? Try to sue you? Get you to pay taxes? Uh, there was significant retribution <laughs> for. Um, not cooperating or not doing it the way that they wanted me to. Uh, again, I don't know how much time we have, but I guess I'll start oh, with the big take, one take as first. Much time as, take as much time as you want. Well, the, uh, the first or the biggest one was uh, being indicted uh, with four felony counts in November of 2004. Uh, what had happened was I had, you know, clients and they, when you've worked for the IRS and even in the criminal investigation division or CID, uh, you know, people think, you know, everything there is to know about the IRS. And I knew quite a bit, but uh, they would ask me, they would have tax problems and IRS problems. And so I would begin to help clients. And this one particular client wanted to uh, he had already filed federal income tax returns uh, for many years. And he knew or found out that he could file amended tax returns for the previous three years and try to get his money back because he learned these things about the income tax that I learned or similar things. And so he hired me, he said, well, you're a CPA, you're a former IRS agent, you would know the rules. If I wanna ask for my money back, what rules do I need to follow to go and do that? And so, Naively, I thought, well, he's right. I, I know the rules. I can certainly look up and help him follow the rules. And isn't that what a CPA should do? You know, make sure that their client follows the rules. So I prepared or, or you know, gathered the information to prepare amended tax returns. And we put into the tax returns a, a position, you know, that basically said he does not owe these federal taxes. He already paid them and therefore he's seeking his money back. And the first step is to amend your tax returns. So there were three of them. And so I was the preparer, you know, as people go to their CPA and get their tax return prepared, you'll see that under your signature is your tax preparer's signature. And so uh, that was around 2001, I think, when I did that. So November of 2004, both my client and I were indicted on four federal felonies, three of which were these three tax returns that I prepared. And the fourth was conspiracy to defraud the United States of America. 
so the uh <laughs> well so the uh the three tax returns you know the the government the irs and the department of justice who was prosecuting me uh asserted that i filed the, these are basically false refund claims that we were making a false claim on a federal tax return about the income tax and that because they were false and fraudulent that i should basically be uh you know, convicted of, of tax perjury, of, of signing a tax return that I prepared that I didn't believe was true, correct, and complete. So at the trial, uh, the IRS put on an expert IRS agent who had, I think it was like 27, 28 years experience. And my defense attorney, uh, Jeffrey Dickstein, um, actually walked through with this agent, you know, went through the page by page, section by section, line by line, is there anything false in section one? Anything false in section six? Anything false on page four? And the IRS agent couldn't point to a single false statement, entry, anything. And my defense attorney even said, well, what, is, there, is this reasonable you know, for Mr. Bannister to have added this attachment? And he said, yes. So the jury's like, well, that's weird. Why, like, is... why are we? Why are we here? There's nothing false <laughs> yes. in this tax. Why are we even here? Right. Yes. So then the fourth charge was conspiracy to defraud the United States of America, and the special agent who I used to work with when I was at the IRS, who ended up investigating me, has spent about three years investigating me, and he was put on the witness stand to testify to any evidence of a conspiracy that he found. And he testified that he couldn't find any evidence of a conspiracy. <laughs> so then the jury's really scratching their heads. And just as, a, as an aside, uh, I have it from a very good source that the special agent actually recommended that I not be prosecuted, that he spent three years investigating me, couldn't find any evidence, put it in his report that that was the case, you know, evidence of wrongdoing, of breaking the law. And then the DOJ and the IRS prosecuted me anyway. And as I'm explaining about the way the trial went, I guess you can see that they really did prosecute me anyway, even though their own investigator couldn't find any wrongdoing after you know digging into my life for three years. So uh, at the end of it, uh, the jury, I think they were out for three, four or five days, quite a, quite a long time for a, a tax trial and acquitted me of all the charges, deservedly. <laughs> right. Why three to five days when they went through line by line? And that's, a, that's bizarre that they took that long, a jury was out that long when the evidence was underwhelming to say the least. Well, I guess it's, I mean, probably typical of, of a juror. You know, you think, well, they, they brought us here. Yeah. There's this guy sitting at the defense table. The judge told us he's innocent till proven guilty, but I mean, you know, where's the beef here? I mean, it's <laughs> it's gotta be here somewhere. And there was a videotape of me giving a presentation that the jury wanted to see a second time. Uh, so there were various delays. The jury was asking questions of the judge uh, about to see certain pieces of evidence and the judge wouldn't let them see it. And they were suspicious about that. Uh, there's actually an interview with a couple of the jurors on my website that people might find a little fascinating. Wow. So then that wasn't the first time. And I don't know that we have time to go through every one of them, but did they come after you again? Maybe you can just give us the high level on that. Well, the, the other uh, fun, fun and games was, um, well, there were, there were others, but the next one I can talk about was um, defrocking me of my CPA certificate. Uh, as I said, I went and helped clients, uh, you know, it wasn't really fun work or enjoyable work, but I really felt bad for people that were, you know, caught like a deer in the headlights with these IRS problems. And so I was, you know, always polite and professional, but I would really drill down and I didn't have any fear about getting the IRS to show, you know, assessments and how they did their audit and how they supported their position. And the IRS didn't take too kindly to that. So they had a special division of the IRS that filed a complaint against me, a civil complaint uh, that after a long period of time ended up um, causing the state of California to revoke my CPA certificate. 
Jeez. So I have a you know revoked CPA certificate, and of course, you know, to the general public, it's like, oh well, that guy's you know damaged goods. He's if his right. CPA was revoked, he must have done something wrong, kind of thing. So, uh, you know, I've I've taken some hits, um, but I think you know people can look at well, what would be the motivation of a guy who has a really nice job, uh, gets paid well, pension, the whole bit, be taken care of for the rest of his life, you know, his motives and, and what might fuel them versus the IRS and the income tax and how many trillions they harvest out of that um, and how powerful they are, you know, and the legions of lawyers and uh, tons of tons of budgets. So I'm just, you know, kind of caught in a situation of telling people my story. I thought that people would be uh, interested that the government, I believe, is lying to them. And, you know, I don't think we want a government lying to us. I, I, I believe in government service. Uh, as you can see, the picture of the family picture on my website uh, come from a family of government servants, <laughs> all badges and guns, uh, brothers, all my brothers. So um, that's kind of where it stands. What do you say? So I imagine you had a lot of people you've helped over the years. What do you say to those people? I mean, have have any of them had to deal with retribution as well? They've said, well, we learned from Joe, like we don't have to pay our taxes. He's opened up our eyes. We've done our research. We've decided we're not paying income taxes anymore. And have you got a sense of maybe how many thousands of people have stood up and said, we're not doing this anymore. This is fraudulent. We're not we're not supposed to do this. We're not supposed to pay federal income taxes. This is a lie. And have people been taken to task by the IRS because of this? Uh, just give us, give us yeah, an idea. It, it really runs, runs the gamut. I mean, there are people that, yeah, you know, close people I know who haven't filed or filed a federal income tax return for 30 years. Wow. Um, and they've had difficulties. Others who hadn't filed for many, you know, decades and then start filing, uh, people that have been filing tax returns and paying income tax and stop. A lot of it depends on what you do for a living. Uh, you know, how much reporting there is on what you do, um, how much money you earn, uh, how well you're known in the community. A lot of people just really aren't on the IRS radar screen. Uh, you know, I, I was, <laughs> right. uh, because of my, uh, inquiries. Um, but there's a lot, you know, there's actually, what's interesting is there were about 3000 criminal investigators at the IRS when I was there in the nineties and it's down to 2,100. Um, wow. so when you think about a country of 350 million people or more and, you know, 2,100 IRS special agents to investigate them, it's, and then you subtract vacation time. Uh, the sluggish uh, attitude of a certain number of them, uh, you know. Well, at the end is, of the day, I, right, I, they're going to go to court if, if, and they're going to try to prove something they can't prove, right? I mean, so if they're going to go after these individuals, it eventually winds up if someone says, well, we're not going to just settle with the IRS. We're going to go to court over it because we feel we're in the right. They can only handle so much of this. The courts are backed up tremendously as it is. Um, and they're going to go to trial over this and they're going to lose because they just don't, there's no law. There's no law to support it, right? Well, if, what, what has worked very well for the government is, you know, in, in my opinion, and all the evidence shows lying to the public works great. So for the people that say, well, maybe they could change the law, they can put in the law. Well, that would mean that there wasn't a law before, right? If they go ahead and do that. Right. Um, so lying and deceiving works great. So why would they change their their tune um but again i just i was born and raised and i'm sure you were too I and mean, there's a lot of americans that have a higher expectation of their government than being lied to uh and if you read my information and you decide no the government's not lying or they're lying but i don't care it's not up to me i, I just know that for me i took an oath to support and defend the constitution took it to god and i was going to honor the oath and I also have, you know, eth the ethics of the CPA profession at the time. I'm not a CPA anymore, but, you know, everything pointed to Joe speaking up and saying something and asking questions. And that's really all I've done. Uh, just trying to be a good citizen, a good example. Um, but as, as we've said, you know, not a Pied Piper, uh, except that people should educate themselves. And I think the more informed you are about what your government's up to, 
uh, the cleaner <laughs> our government will function. And, well, wouldn't it be amazing? You know, we, I think we'd all feel good about ourselves, right? When we pay our taxes, we like to think that when we're paying our taxes, it's going to the betterment of the United States. But instead, it's being sent to it's being sent to Israel. It's being sent to Ukraine. It's being sent to nine wars that the United States is currently involved in around the world. We have a defense budget close to a trillion dollars. Uh, our southern border is wide open. President Trump asked for fifteen billion to build a border wall. They gave him five billion, and yet we can send billions around the world. We have crime that's rampant in the United States. Our cities are crumbling and falling apart. The reason we're asking this question is because the government has been belligerent with our money. They've, they've been poor stewards of our money. We give them this check. We work hard every day. I know I do. I know you do. I know most Americans work very, very hard and for diminishing returns. And they send off a check to the IRS. They send off the check to the federal government. And the government is not is not doing its job. And that's why we're asking these questions, are we not? So it certainly makes it more um, more of an impact. I mean, I think whether, however the government's acting, it should be, they should be following the law, right? As the, right. as we hear so often, no one is above the law. Right. Well, the IRS still se seems to think they are. Um, and they, the way they, they prosecute people, harass people, um, you know, one of the other things in my trial is that before my trial even began, the weekend before, they tried to get one of my two defense attorneys kicked out of, off my defense team. Uh, actually, Robert Bernhoff, who defended Wesley Snipes, if you remember when Wesley Snipes was right. uh, prosecuted on felonies and misdemeanors, and he was a uh, Wesley Snipes was acquitted of all the felonies, uh, and Robert Bernhoff was also my attorney or co-attorney co in my defense. And they try to get him kicked off my defense team before the trial even began. So d dirty tricks, uh, they, they got a big, big bag of dirty tricks. And um, so, you know, you have to, you watch out for that. So let me just ask you, I'll get you out of here on this last few questions here, Joe, but it's like, all right, let's say someone's watching right now and not to use me as an example, but let's just use me. I'll be the guinea pig here. Let's just say I, I come to you and I'm like, Joe, You've opened my eyes. I've been paying income taxes my whole life. Going back to my, you know, when I became an adult and I had to do it for the first time and I had to do an easy form back when I made, you know, no money at all back in the day. And I went through that whole process and H&R Block back in the day. Um, it, Joe, I'd like to, I'd, you know what? I want to stop paying taxes. And by the way, can I retroactively get my money back from the government? Uh, what does the process look like for somebody who's had this awakening and they come to you and you you want to offer them help? What's the first thing, bit of advice you give to that person? Well, when you speak about the getting your money back, I've already been down that road. So I would, <laughs> I would definitely tell them as clean as your request to get your money back and as much as you follow the the law and the, the procedures uh they could very well still accuse you of a false refund claim a fraudulent refund claim so i would definitely say if that money's gone it's gone don't don't go chasing so start, after so it. start fresh start fresh now start, going yeah. going forward okay now what do they have to do now going forward to to not pay anymore to protect themselves well, I'd say the main, there are basically two ways that the IRS goes after you. The, the principal way, of course, is civilly, where they're going to come and take your assets, right? Your paycheck, your, uh, your ha put a lien on your house. If you have equity in your home, then you can't borrow. Um, and then, of course, the second way, which is much less frequent, uh, doesn't touch that many Americans, is, is to put you in prison, you know, to take away your freedom. So to take away your freedom, being investigated by a special agent like I used to be is really rare, um, but you definitely don't want to be lying. Uh, if you're somebody that has burned a lot of people uh, over the years, you know, in other ways, uh, well, then those people might end up testifying in your trial and showing what a bad guy or gal you are. <laughs> so, you know, you definitely want to have uh, a life of integrity and, and honor. Would You'd be a lot better off in terms of staying clear of the uh, criminal investigation civilly you know when you have assets you want to make sure they're protected uh with things like trusts but not, you know you can't do this protection after the irs comes knocking if they you know if they're going to come knocking so it's looking at your your asset picture uh, making sure your assets are protected 
uh, and then what you do for a living and then how the people who pay you are going to react to your, your stance. So those are the kinds of consultations I like the best because these are proactive people who are just asking questions of what if I did X or what if I did Y, uh, what would probably happen? And, you know, given my experience, I'm able to tell them what might happen and then they can make their own decision because I don't, I don't try to push people into, into that battle. Uh, you know, we are, as I'm sure you're well aware, uh, with, especially with your show, which I love, is how much, how many f ways that our government is really uh, abusing the citizens. And so something's got to happen and something more is going to happen. Uh, I pray it's going to be, um, you know, nonviolent and peaceful. That's what I'm going to work for. I think we have plenty of tools nonviolent and, and peaceful tools to get the job done. Uh, but we need a few more Americans to wake up and realize that they got to get, get in and, you know, help row the boat. Well, it's incredibly eye opening, And, uh, I just, you know, I hope that people just educate themselves, spend the time and have conversations and consultations with people like yourself and, and others who are, who are educated about this. And, you know, it, I think information is power and people uh, powerful and people can make their own determination for themselves, uh, what they want to do in their lives. Joe, I, I thank you for opening our eyes. I guess the website is agentfortruth.com. People can go over there and learn more about your history, your battles, um, and all of the information that you've collated over the years about the IRS code uh, and everything there. So I, I really, really appreciate you joining us here. Thank you so much, Joe. It's my pleasure, Clayton. Thank you for having me.